Hey there, and welcome to Dead Cells. So today we're going to be taking a look at the tentacle weapon, which is dropped by the tentacle enemy in the ancient sewers. Now, the most noteworthy thing about this weapon is its very strange critical condition. And by strange critical condition, I mean it functions as both a ranged weapon and a melee weapon to an extent. That's... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just still reeling because I got like uh, knocked up for a second. It's basically the, the weapon's damage is divided into two portions. The range damage little grapple that you get from, from reaching out the tentacle and the melee crit punch that you get when you actually do the punch. And the thing about the the tentacle is that you can't actually do that crit punch when you're too far away from an enemy. So the weapon's gimmick is sort of all about maintaining distance, but at the same time, every time you use it, you pull yourself closer to the enemies, making it harder to maintain distance. Because of that, I've enabled a lot of uh, movement and like knockback sort of sort of uh, skills, mutations, not mutations. <laughs> I mean, the, the knockback shield is good, but I... Sorry. <laughs> I wanted to see if I could get the, uh, the melee kill on that guy so that I could use it for, uh, for getting the berserker proc to eat that infected food without hurting myself. Not hurting myself, but you know, getting the the malaise. I wait. I don't even have berserk. <laughs> what, what am I talking about? Ah oh, man. Off to a roaring success in the very beginning. Uh, okay, so I have the Spartan sandals enabled because I was thinking it might be really fun or really stupid. Probably really stupid, but you know, I'm gonna. I want to do it anyway. <laughs> to uh see if I can have like a combo going where I get up close to an enemy with the with the punch and then kick him away and then grapple to him again. It's just stupid enough to work. And I also have a uh, light speed enabled and wave of denial seeing as those are like the the other two knock back oriented sort of things. It's it's a fun weapon, it's just a little bit inconsistent at times because of all the, the extra effort you gotta put into to, to get the, the damage. Cause you, sorry, God, dang it. <laughs> you can just like uh, sit right on top of an enemy and then whittle them down with a little like close range melee stuff, but it's not, I mean the the close range range attack, I guess, but it's it's not gonna do that much for you. I I don't think, cause like what's the the DPS difference? Oh, it's it's not that much of a DPS difference actually. Okay. But you know it's you don't get as many hits off and you get stuck in in the the pull animation. So doing that while being directly on top of an enemy is not not the greatest. Oh yeah, and Mushroom Boy's here too, because of course he is. <laughs> the one thing Mushroom Boy excels at is knocking away enemies, which is the one thing I really really need with this. And of course, I just want to look around to see if I can get uh, the Explorer's Rune active ASAP, just so I can. You know, make sure I'm not missing anything. And sure enough, I'm not. So let's head on out of here. I'm thinking the best place to go with this would be the promenade, just because like, uh, you know, it's it's got a lot of open spaces, like potentially kite enemies around, grapple to them with decent success. And, you know, judging by just like, uh, well, the, the impressions I'm getting off this weapon right now, 
because I, I used it back when it was first added in the in the who's the boss update and it it really didn't feel all that great because it felt like I had to be far away to, to do it to get that off but I don't know if they changed it so that you have to be closer or I mean not that you have to be closer but if you can cast it closer because, you know, I was messing around with it in the prison quarters just now. It felt like I was getting a lot more criticals than I normally would. Like I can get a critical from that range. Or that range. Or that range. Or that. Wait, that was just even point blank. Does it always give a crit if you just mash the button? <laughs> was I... Have I been using it wrong this whole ding dang time? It could be. One thing to note is that Tentacle is not the best weapon to use with a shield. Because you you have like this, uh, you want to be doing like this hit and run sort of style, not, you know, being on top of an, an enemy. I, I just did that from point blank. I, I guess this entire build, or <laughs> I've got nothing but knockback items, is completely pointless <laughs> I I got turned around there uh, figuratively and literally I'm just still trying to wrap my head around this but not to worry that's that's good if anything that'll make this whole run a lot easier and maybe who knows maybe I can take a shield We'll see. The uh, the Spartan sandals will always be there if I feel like I need that need that uh, knockback. It's a uh, it's getting off to the relative success in in the beginning. I think. Been, been hit quite a couple times, but it hasn't been from the standard reasons. It's just been getting like confused and just overwhelmed. Ugh. There, there is like quite a bit of carryover uh, momentum. I don't know why my brain was like potential is the word you're looking for, but no, it's it's the momentum when you when you punch through an enemy, you keep going for a bit. Dang it. Dang, these bombardiers are really proving to be my greatest nemesis while working with this weapon. Okay, so it's... You can't do it from, like, perfect point blank. That, that much, I think we just figured out. Or who knows? <laughs> Maybe if you can get a macro going or something that just makes you constantly constantly doing it you could I uh, have no idea gotta go quiet for the trap room because it's a trap room and has the potential to end my entire career well I guess the promenade trap room isn't that bad and also I'm not playing tactics this time so One little hit, not too bad. Yeah, I I feel like this is a weapon that needs some training, or at least it's gonna take me a few levels to really get into the rhythm of it, the rhythm of the rhyme, and and such. But I can I see it as something with a lot of potential, not really against bosses. Because doing the whole hit and run tactic seems like it's gonna get me hit a lot. So, ideally, I would be able to swap out my Teleric Shock and Powerful Grenade for, you know, something more effective against bosses. I, I tried to hit the, the grenade right there, and I don't know, my input just didn't go through.
Nope. Alright, I... <laughs> See, I didn't run straight through the guy and into his bomb this time. I'm learning. It's important to... It's important to learn. To make sure you don't make the same mistake twice. Or, at, at like, four times at this point. <laughs> Although, some of those bombs were just because I didn't notice them, not because I wasn't thinking about the fact that I had charged headfirst into them. Did like a little switcheroo there. Okay. Ah, uh, Telerik Shock is really nice. I, I like jump up a little bit every time I do the grapple and it's a little bit disconcerting. But that's fine. Oof, yeah. <laughs> that is another thing to note. Uh, you, your hitbox extends, like... Well, I don't know if your hitbox extends past the punch hitbox, but the punch doesn't really go through until you've already been hit by the enemy who, who's jumping at you in a lot of situations. So you will actually end up taking that that damage if you try to try to charge him head on so i i mean i i guess that's why it's like a, a tactics scaling weapon also because it's more for uh like getting the jump on somebody or, or some enemy and and assassinating them without really you know staying in the fight long enough to to have them notice you charge at you and then you Butt heads in the middle of the air and both suffer collateral damage. Though he took a lot worse of a beating than I did. I think I only lost like 6% of my HP or, or, or 10 or something. Anyway, it's... It doesn't seem like Adrenaline or Frenzy are going to be that useful. Adrenaline might be... You know, I will actually run with Adrenaline just because like I... Maybe I should have gone Frenzy. It's, it's hard to say, because I don't know if I'm going to be having much of a speed boost when I have to, like, you know, prepare for, for dealing with enemies. Knockback shield is going to be good. The, the whole reason I have it in the pool is so that I could get a colorless one, so... You know, it's, I kind of have to take it at that point. It's a little scary to use the thing in, in tight quarters, but uh, it's working. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know if Adrenaline was the right choice, because I don't know how often it's going to be where I'm going to be able to dodge and then get the hit off. So I, I should have spent a little bit of... A little bit more time in that uh, mutation screen, you know, picking my choices more carefully. Because if I had just logic it out for like two more seconds, I, th I think I would have come to that conclusion. Well, I mean, actually, I'm I'm getting a little bit of use out of it. Who knows? Maybe it's maybe it's amazing. Maybe uh, it always it like <laughs> wait, it, it knocked him a little too far back that time. Hmm. Mayhaps my desperate attempts to find a synergy with with knockback will actually make this weapon more difficult to use in some situations. There we go. Easy peasy, living greasy. <laughs> right, I started watching Adventure Time again. Very good classic cartoon. Is it is it considered a classic now? I think it probably is, considering it's been out for, for a while. Quite a while. They've got, like, ten seasons at this point. Uh, yeah, it's... The show took on, like, a much more, like, serious vibe when they introduced a bunch of plot point elements and stuff. I mean, of course, every show has plot, but, like... I mean, uh, it was all just, like, goofs for the first, uh... For the first like two seasons and then it became a little more serious it's still i mean i like a i like a cartoon that can uh that can have like 
not lose touch with its overall sort of comedy, but still, like it's it's goofball comedy, strange stuff. But it still can incorporate enough serious elements to get you like invested in in the characters and stuff. I don't know. That's <laughs> that's like a a real random and unrelated uh, like film style thing. Oops, I am getting a phone call. Hang on. Okay. Well. Now that that's back over with, or now that that's over with, we can get back to the game. Got a war spear here, but I th think taking a war spear would sort of overshadow the the tentacle <laughs> because the tentacle already kind of shines in in regular enemy combat. I would consider maybe taking something like the the giant killer. But I, I don't think that's actually enabled. Okay, well, we're getting a little bit of use out of uh, out of the thing. And if I can, darn, these guys work. Oh yeah, yeah, it works. There we go. <laughs> if you eat malaise infected food quickly enough after you've uh, gotten berserker the uh, malaise resistance will apply and you won't actually get any malaise from the food. So, you know, Berserker kind of functions like uh, a healing mutation in that way. It's it's honestly my favorite mutation. It's, it's so good that I take it on like any melee run pretty much, except for tactics because, you know, it, it's kind of inconsequential. He's gonna die if you get hit anyway. That's rough. Maybe I shouldn't have taken Adrenaline so soon. I should have gone with Masochist. But also, who expects there to be two trap rooms like right back to back? That rarely ever happens. It should be okay though. I, I think we're we're gonna be totally fine. Nice. So you can get some some pretty cool dash moves off with this thing. It's just important to, to remember the range of your actual grapple so you don't like short shoot it like I've been doing. I, pro I probably should have looked at the uh, the other one, but and by the other one I mean the uh, clerks. Hmm. I kind of like the increased move speed after killing an enemy, which would be better with Frenzy than Adrenaline, but, you know, it, it's it's fine. Uh, what was I going on about? I guess, uh... I guess I was saying I should... I probably should have gone for the uh, Flamethrower turret, just because... I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I... I had a reason, probably. Oh boy. I'm trying to keep your thoughts straight while while talking and while playing the game is probably the most difficult part about making videos. Which which is why it's kind of nice to be able to do the, the text-based thing. But at the same time, I, I feel like the, the quality of, of a video is, is just kind of better when it's, uh, when there's live commentary, just because I can it's, you know, constant talking is pro probably more entertaining than uh, just an occasional quip here and there. Not even a quip. <laughs> a quip implies there's some sort of joke. It's like a, a comment about the uh, about the weapon we're working on, working with. Mayhaps a little joke or two. <laughs> Some sort of terrible pun, I believe, is my more my style. <laughs> uh, okay, what do you what do you got here? A uh, tentacle ten or nine. Nine would be all right. Could get bleeding synergy or burning with spreads and flammable oil. I mean, this is a pretty good cleaver, but I don't know if I'm gonna take if I'm gonna hold on to it long enough to to bother with bleeding synergy, but at the same time I'm probably going to pick up a bloodthirsty shield if it shows up. 
And uh, these things are, are like pretty cheap at only uh, 6,000 or 5,700. So I can afford to get one to make my life against the concierge just a little bit easier. Because concierge, he's not a hard fight, of course. Because all of his patterns are really simple, super telegraphed, easy to dodge. Just gotta, like, focus on not letting yourself get sandwiched into a wall, and you should be perfectly fine. It's, it's just the fact that your actual windows to attack him when working with a melee weapon are more limited due to the fact that he almost constantly has that lacerating aura type, you know, uh, effect around him. Making it very difficult to, to get in position for your melee attacks, causing the fight to go on longer and consequently making me more tired. And the more tired I get, the more sloppy I play, and the more likely I am to get hit and ruin my flawless. I'm not salty, I swear. I think... I think, since that's a ranged attack, as long as you don't double tap it, you should be able to get free hits on a thorny. And not have to worry about taking that, that damage. I mean, that's that's my working theory, and I assume it works. Because why wouldn't it? Oh boy, just, uh... I started feeling a little sick there, not gonna lie. I'm not sure why. I... Again, I guess I just didn't have a very good breakfast. And that's okay. I don't have bonus damage to a frozen target. Not right now. There we go. This weapon seems like it's pre pretty alright against slashers because, uh, you know. Alright, cool, cool. That is... The working theory does work. It's been tested. Uh, anyway, slashers can't really do much if you're outside of their range unless they use their third attack and if you have a shield you can just parry the third attack back, they'll be stunned and give you more time to, to work around them. Every enemy has its weakness that will let you deal with them decently easily as long as you know how to abuse it properly. You can get that hit and just go through them. It does kind of help that we got freeze enemies on a parry, even though I, <laughs> I, I assume the lightning bolt video is gonna go up before this one. I don't know. I I record a bunch of videos in in sort of like bulk, I guess you could say. It's not really that I record them in bulk. I record like one a day. I, sorry, <laughs> commercial advertising brainwashing. Uh, I record like one a day, and then like by the time I, I edit it, it's like a couple days later. But they don't actually get out until uh, like quite a while later, because I can only upload like one video per day, and that's that's being generous. <laughs> it it takes like. When I say I can only upload one per day, I mean it takes like a full 24 hours to upload a video and I'm not going to leave my computer on for, for 24 hours because, you know, it's not, it's not good. It's going to burn out the, the stuff. I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's got a lot of fans. It's just hot because it's, uh, it's getting like, winter time is over. Springtime. Is spring over? I don't really know how long the, the seasons last. Ooh, the Spartan sandals. I okay, I was gonna I was gonna take the Spartan sandals as an offhand, but I think this knockback shield is gonna be better. 
Well, it, it's partially that I think the knockback shield is going to be better, and, and partially because I feel like I, I don't really need uh, something to knock enemies back anymore because I've grown accustomed to using the thing <laughs> without uh, any proper setup. But yeah, I, I was going into this thinking Tentacle was like a, a C tier weapon, which, you know, means it's it's something that... It's basically a C tier weapon in my... in the little, like, tier ranking list th new thing that I was working on. I mean, I probably implemented it in the videos that I'm going to be posting before this as well, so I assume I'll have made, like, a little video about it or... Uh, or just, you know, made a comment about it on, on the first video I tried it. But basically, uh, S tier items are like always good, have like little to no drawbacks, uh, they'll pretty much carry your run and work with a whole different slew of, of like possible build combinations. Uh, a tier is stuff that requires you to build around it, but has the potential to be really strong when you get that good builds. B tier is require B tier is like A tier basically, except it re requires a lot more setup to to be good, Me meaning it's like more inconsistent. Uh, and then C tier is something that requires like a lot of a lot of practice or effort to be put into it to make it good. But at the same time, good isn't nearly as good as like a a B tier weapon or an A tier weapon, so. Uh, I guess the Oshawa is not over and done with right now. And then a D tier weapon would be... A D tier weapon would be something that just like... There are other items that do its job way better than it does. So that would be like the root grenade, the stun grenade, because they're all like inferior versions of the ice grenade. Uh, I'd probably put the, the biter swarm down there too, just because like... They're not that useful. You could probably get more use out of, like, a, I don't know. <laughs> like, well, you could definitely get more use out of a turret, but you could also get more use out of, like, a, an, an infantry grenade, I think. And, you know, with this plus damage to bleeding, and the fact that Cleaver is just really good. We're, we're chunk, chunking through this guy. <laughs> Sorry, I, I think there is a bug in my headset. And I don't mean that as a computer bug, I mean that as like an ear <laughs> an earwig. Not in my ear, but... Well, I mean, hopefully not. Ah, uh, rats. I was standing too close to him when he did the roar, so I got stunned and couldn't get to a better position fast enough. That is one issue... Uh, uh, heck. Oh, thanks. That is one issue about the tentacle, uh, at least against the con concierge, is that... Stuff that moves you around a lot it isn't very good against him. Well, it's... It's good against him when it's something like light speed, which lets you dash straight through him during the the field. So as long as you save it, you know you'll you'll be good. But if it's something like the tentacle, where you're just kind of where you're not invulnerable and you don't dash through him, you dash on top of him, or or like to the other side of him, then you're just putting yourself in prime position to be sandwiched against the wall. But you know it's okay. I <laughs> I might hold myself to an unrealistic standard uh, trying to get a flawless every single time I fight the concierge. But also I try to get a flawless on every single boss every time I fight them because, you know, the <laughs> that's ideal. That wasn't a good parry. <laughs> Wait, no, it, it was. The parry was not <laughs> the bad part of that, though. I'm trying to formulate my thoughts. Never underestimate the power of jumping in addition to rolling. <laughs> it can save you in a lot of situations like that. Because uh, 
a lot of enemy attacks are actually a lot shorter than they seem, and you can jump over their hitboxes. So, it's pretty good. It's pretty darn good. I don't mean to sound like I'm about to die literally every time I'm fighting, but it takes a little extra effort to keep the commentary going and not stop talking while I'm uh, in the middle of in the middle of uh, some some semi te uh, hectic stuff. <laughs> Sorry, that's like a, a weird sort of stutter. It's it's less like a stutter and more like a, a a computer buffering or like a scratched disc just repeating the same sound over and over. I uh, get like that sometimes when my brain is overheating because I am a computer. I'm a veritable human computer, except I'm not that good at math. <laughs> I I'm okay. No, I'm I'm not. It's not like I'm bad at math or anything. I just really don't like having to do math problems, so I just wouldn't. Uh, I just don't like, or I wouldn't pay attention in school very much. Because why would I pay attention to math when I can when I already know all the math that I that I need to to calculate how much damage stuff in dead cells does. That's the most <laughs> applicable thing I learned in math class, which is just like multiplication at that point. Oh, it's... <laughs> that was so potentially janky. I mean, it was pretty janky, but we got through it okay. And I'm... No, I'm not, I'm not gonna... <laughs> uh... I was in the middle of saying I'm not going to acknowledge that I'm close to the 60 because I'm going to get to 59 and then just get bonked. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. No, oh, that sucks. I, I'm on tilt. Alright, buddy, come on. He just grew a couple sizes. Uh, okay, where's that food shop? I should, like... I shouldn't have gotten hit there. <laughs> I really had no reason to, but I, I, my brain was just buffering. Uh, I really should grab uh, a baguette because I don't have... I don't have disengagement. So if I get bursted down super hard, I, I might just get like double comboed and killed. So I need some extra... Some extra padding for my HP. I mean, it, as long as you're running with Berserker and getting some melee kills pretty often, it, you're not likely to get 100 to 0 comboed because of that 60% uh, damage reduction that is up like near constantly. As long as you're not spending too much time in between fights. Should be pretty good to go. And I think... I'm thinking that I want to... I'm thinking that I want to head to the clock tower. Mostly because, like, I'm gonna fight the, the timekeeper anyway. <laughs> how can... how could I pass that up? I mean, I, I could pass it up pretty easily because it's deal, double, take, double on something that isn't my main weapon. But also, how often do you get to see a brutality scaling a Great Owl of War with deal, double, take, double? Uh, it's pretty rare, if you ask me. I don't think I want to reroll the deal, double, take, double, but at the same time, maybe I do. Just. Because, you know, a Brutality Owl is pretty darn good, even if it doesn't deal double damage. And at that point, the drawback might be a little more detrimental than the actual benefit that it provides. Thereby offsetting it and making it a not worth choice. But, you know, it's it's a little too early to say. I'll, I'll have to roll with it in, in its current state for a while. Considering I have Masochist at the moment. Oh, but I should... Okay. <laughs> I, I really don't want to have a repeat 
of the uh, of the timekeeper run where I'm just gonna get like halfway up the tower without uh, without the thing. All right, okay. I will actually go for... <laughs> Can I get away with this? I'm thinking if I go disengagement, masochist, and then... What is it? What should I go with? I, I feel like I shouldn't go with adrenaline because I'm not going to proc it that much. I'd probably proc frenzy more, but at this point, I think... I can just get HP from other places. So I'll go with Soldier's Resistance because I don't want to full out cut off my ability to heal, but I would like some increased... I would like some increased Malaise Resistance if I'm not going to be running Berserker at the moment. Just because I feel like uh, when you get like... When you get like to this point in the game, Berserker is maybe less... It's going to be a little bit harder to use. I mean, not really, but like... Okay, I'm back. So, I don't remember where, where I was before, but what I do know is that I gotta be careful around all these ding dang sp sp spikes. I, I was more worried about the spike pit than the spike ball, but I suppose I just let my guard down, making me more <laughs> susceptible to taking damage. Masticus got my back though. Oh, I gotta get the owl back up, right? I'm not used to having an owl on on a build like this. I I don't think owl is bad by any stretch of the imagination. I just think I might have uh, overrated it initially, so I've been trying to to like play without it a little more. Because, you know, back when I was doing tactics runs, when, when the owl was first added, I, I would take the owl, like, every run, because it just felt like hands-off damage, where... Because, like, bosses can break your turrets and stuff. So it felt like... It felt like putting down a turret, because I wasn't thinking about when I was putting down a turret, I just drop it on the ground whenever. Wouldn't really be all that useful, because... I like knock. <laughs> Sorry, I just really like knockback shield. It's it's fun, especially when you're in like a semi-close quarters area and can just knock an enemy back into the wall so they take big damage. Uh, oh yeah, because this owl has spreads inflammable oil, pretty much any flamethrower turret should be a good pick. Well, it, it would be a good pick if we if we didn't like uh, hedge all our bets on uh, bleed synergy with the cleaver. So, yeah, it would be good if we had burning oil synergy, but I think for the moment, uh, what I am kind of surprised that I actually got that. Uh, I probably should have left that, and in, in all honesty, so that I could use it on some enemies to get a little bit of a better heal. But also, that's a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, it's not that much, but it's like... Oof. Uh... So yeah, it's uh... I mean... Oil just does make fire do quite a bit more damage. So even if we don't have uh, the, the burning oil synergy, it might still be kind of worth to, to go for it. I'm... I'm iffy on that though because even though it would be like pretty good damage over time i i don't think it'd be more than the than the plus 60 percent bonus that we're getting from uh from cleaver but who's to say oh yeah i th I don't know if this is what I was talking about before I uh, before I left. I'm sorry if it was because I'm gonna be repeating uh, something I said earlier. But I went into this thinking that tentacle was gonna be a C tier weapon because uh, you know it. From my memory, it seemed like it took a lot of setup to use properly, and even when it was used properly, it wasn't really anything special. 
in like DPS wise. But I, I think I was just like using it wrong. Or or I just wasn't gamer enough because I was <laughs> I, I mean, I'll be real, I've gotten significantly better at the game since uh, the Who's the Boss update. I think in the Who's the Boss update, I was still decently hard stuck in uh, in Boss L4 because I would keep taking breaks before actually reaching the end of it. And that's not how you progress. That's how you die and lose. It was my fault, though. I kept trying to fight the giant with uh, without a shield when shields are, like, like his biggest counter that is one thing that I kind of that I'm kind of not a, a big fan about it's basically like oof. it's basically like timekeeper and the giant are are both two bosses that you f that you have like the option of fighting and both are good against shields and and hard to fight without shields So I always find myself in this dilemma where if I'm if I'm working with a, a build that doesn't have a shield and I, I get to that chance or I get to that choice the the crossroads in the sepulcher I'm just thinking like should I th should I throw away like the entire build I put together just because I just to make this one boss fight easier and I don't know I I, I don't really like that. I feel like it might be nice to have, because uh, like Mamatic and Conjunctivius, they are they're difficult bosses to fight. That much is is true. But also, you really don't need a shield to fight them at all. Like whether you have a shield or not is kind of inconsequential, because you can sort of just like outrange a lot of their attacks. But it's because the Timekeeper and the Giant both have a lot of attacks that that are are spread out meaning that you can't just dodge through them once and and what i'm talking about is like the the giant's fireball attack where he cages you in with the uh fire lasers and then fires out those two well those three sets of um fireballs and when he does that like you you either jump over them but it can be kind of finicky if you ask me. <laughs> I was, well, this is looking pretty good. But then again, uh, turrets and... Turrets and stuff like Owl are really good against Timekeeper. Are you serious? <laughs> I can't believe I got CC chains like that. That's rough. I tried to roll at the end of my, uh, at the end of my, uh, my tentacle, like, pull. But it just, uh, it, it didn't let me. So then I got hit by the, uh, I'm going to take potion slick here. So then I got hit by the sword and then stunned from that and got hit by, and because I was stunned, got hit by the timekeeper's first hit. And if you get hit by the first hit and stunned, then you're going to get hit by all the hits because that's just how that, how that attack works. That's okay. But, you know, <laughs> up until I acknowledged that the fight was going well, it, it was going well. Okay, can I get a better tentacle? I don't really need one. That would be a good one if I can swap. Okay, no. Never mind. I, I keep, like, imagining this situation where I can get a, a flamethrower turret that applies bleeding. And that's that's just not going to do it. Alternatively, though, I could swap out the, uh, the owl with uh, a flamethrower turret. I don't know how great that would work. Because, uh... Well, because if the turret doesn't have inflammable oil, then the only way I have to get inflammable oil was the owl that I swapped it out for. It's like... It's like selling a wig to buy a comb. Or something like that. I don't know. You can probably come up with a better analogy, but you get what I'm saying. It's stuff like that. I was just thinking, I, I remember there probably was like a, a cartoon I watched as a kid with like a, a similar premise about like 
That was a good flick parry. <laughs> I, I don't mean to acknowledge like when I do something like that, it's just I I get legitimately surprised by by that because I wasn't paying attention to, to the demon at all. But I was just like, Ooh, parry. <laughs> and got him. I got the parry. Okay. So yeah, as long as I space out my hits, I should be able to get a perfectly free fight against this, uh, this thorny. Since, uh, it's a ranged attack. I mean, I probably don't even need to. I can just, I can just do this, and then they'll die. It's a, a good owl. I don't know if it has bleed synergy. I can't really check, uh, because I can't reach I and K. To, to scroll, but you know, don't don't worry about it. If it were important, I would I would have done it, I guess. Nah, that's not that's not true. Okay. Uh. No, the food is in the in there. It's in the it's in the bag. Okay, cool. There's a nice baguette ready for consumption at any given time. That is one good thing about having lore rooms on. I played with them off for a really long time just because I felt like it, it was annoying to to an extent. You know. Just like having all these longer rooms makes a level longer and, and stuff like that, but it's not really the case because you can tell which ones are going to be the lore rooms and just kind of avoid them. Unless they're ones you know have food in them, in which case you can go in there, get a food, get a food when you're in a dire straits. When you're in dire straits. Darn, grammar's failing. <laughs> uh, it just makes the, the 5BC grind a little bit easier. Not that I consider this a grind. It's... It probably it might seem like I'm trying to grind through to get a win with every weapon, but it's more so just that I want to gain experience with every weapon. So it's not about getting the victory; it's about the the journey, like getting there. Cause like if, cause like I've, I've recorded videos in the past where it's like I've I've won with the weapon, but I didn't feel like I learned anything. Like that happened with the uh, with the Nerves of Steel run. Cause like I. I was just going through it, but I kept like missing, I started missing criticals when I got near the end, and I just didn't feel good about it. Because I, I felt like, if anything, I, I was just tired and upset, and if I tried to like rate the weapon at, at that point, I was just playing like I had nerves of steel because I was talking about it. I tried to charge up a critical midair. Oh boy. Uh. Yeah, I, I didn't feel like I learned anything, so if I if I had like tried to rate it at that time, I, I wouldn't have given it fair uh, I wouldn't have given it a fair evaluation. I, I would have probably said it was like a six out of ten stupid weapon, even even though I know that it's good and I legitimately enjoy using it most of the time. I I try not to to let like my my biased feelings after like immediately after the run leak into my into my final like critique I guess I don't want to say critique because I'm I'm not a critic <laughs> I'm very generous with a lot of my ratings at least I, I feel like I am I gotta go back for that uh, for that croissant when I want to get a good opportunity uh, baguette I mean No! Uh, uh, darn it. Dang it. <laughs> uh, okay. I can get the, the baguette. I'm sorry. I don't, I, I don't swear often. It, it's just the heat of the moment when I think I'm about to die because my HP is covered and then I have this, like, panicked moment of Wait, am I below 25%? Is one-shot protection not going to kick in, thereby bypassing my disengagement shield and then just killing me outright before I even have a chance to do anything about it? <laughs> and that's 
the most that's the most frustrating way to die in, in the game this is just a, a temporary temporary thing uh, picking up this uh, uh, d thing because if I go here get bleeding on everybody then I can get some extra healing and now I can I can run back and get my cleaver I don't really like to do stuff like like this just because it's uh, it takes longer and five easy runs are so long I just want to I, I just want to get squeeze as much as I can out of a weapon but in a, as short a run as possible so people don't lose interest <laughs> I'm stupid <laughs> that was scary <laughs> I really I really don't like doing this in the castle because there's so many spikes and they're all on the walls the the only like worst place I can think of would be the Arboretum but because it's early on in the game the spikes won't even do that much so it's just like grr. <laughs> okay okay gotta cool down and I I have to remember maybe this is what I was talking about uh, I I don't like it when I have like a freeze on a on a parry because it screws up my ability to to deal with like the the boss patterns properly because I I'm so used to dodging based off of like my muscle memory and and reflexes so when they're slowed down I my brain just like shuts down <laughs> is this what I want is it what I want Dang it. I, I don't think it is. I think I want uh, dead inside disengagement. I don't think I'll need masochist past this point because I'm not going to get pushed in the spikes and if I do I'm going to be sad. And I, I guess I'll go adrenaline just because it's pretty easy to cheese out adrenaline with the bombers and in, in the, in the thing. That seems... it seems like it'll work. I... I might have wanted to take, uh, I might have wanted to take Masochist because I might overshoot when I'm trying to go through the hand and then I'll just end up, like, flying into the spikes. Mach 5. I forgot to take shield off the parry, or freezing off the parry. Thankfully, it's it's early on enough so that it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I'm shaken, not stirred. I lost my owl immediately. <laughs> big punch <laughs> right in the butt uh, okay well it, that could have been like so much worse it really could have been I this is like one reason I don't like the owl I, I do kind of like the idea of having an owl with a uh, deal double take double just because like if it, it's super risk reward because you know, the owl will deal double if you get to use it, but if you don't get to use it, because if you get hit, you lose it, then your D your DPS is going to suffer a lot. And if I weren't recording, I would wait for, for my, uh, my uh, disengagement to be up, but I, I'm just going to... I'm just going <laughs> to keep going, I guess. And I'll keep going, but I'll play like a little bit more safely. I well, I do have the owl, and the owl can take care of uh, librarians for me, so we should be pretty good here. Okay, okay. Face my wrath, and by my wrath, I mean my owl's wrath. The thing about slammers is that, well, not just slammers, a lot of enemies actually. 
they can't really do all that much to you if you're jumping around in the air because they need because even if stuff like teleports or jumps to you it needs a solid platform to get onto or it won't even attempt it because if it because if it tries to do that when it doesn't have a solid platform it's, it's just gonna die and the AI wants to keep itself alive so that it can make you not alive So, you know, it's not going to do those unnecessary risks to to get you. Which is nice, because if, if they did... If enemies were constantly killing themselves in an attempt to kill me, the game would be so much more hectic and terrifying. Ugh. I... <laughs> I just got like a like a mini wave of stress just thinking about it. But we good. Alright, I... <laughs> I'm sorry for ever doubting the owl. I, I'm so glad that I have it just to deal with the, uh... the shenanigans. And by shenanigans, I, you know, I mean the, um... Dealing with the librarians. Because librarians are like the most... Uh, librarians are like the most dangerous variable in, uh, in Dead Cells, you know, the, to, to me. Not in, in the whole game itself, of course, but in, in the Astrolab. I mean, Slammers are pretty bad too, but you, when you've got someone like this, you can kind of cheese them around. It's nice to... I feel like it is kind of important to get like that uh that ref reflex, I I guess. Ah damn it. I mean dang it. Okay, so what I wanted to do there was duck under the, the bomber's attack, but I couldn't really duck under because I was already in the air trying to dodge the, the other guy. Where's my owl? Owl kind of glitches out when you teleport, which, which can be rough, especially because I need him right here. Okay. I didn't need him. I guess I shouldn't be too reliant on the owl because I can't have him forever. If you don't do the punch, you can roll out of the, uh, like, roll out of the grapple sort of thing. As long as you're doing it to enemies. I, I think if you pull yourself into a wall, it'll always kind of do it. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just good to have like that sort of reflex so you don't go careening off of the sides of buildings. I mean, I don't know. Like, <laughs> this is the first time I've used this thing since, uh, since Who's the Boss. I, I'm just specu speculating. That's embarrassing. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I get embarrassed a lot when I, when I play this game. I I get embarrassed because I know I can I can do better even while talking. I mean, of course, like everything is harder while I'm while I'm talking to to, to an extent. <laughs> ah, that was kind of close. I right, gotta give it hand it to. Him. The one thing I do like about Freeze on a parry is that it, it, neutralize, it neutralizes enemies who have shields, basically. Because enemies who have shields uh, will still be frozen when you parry, so you know they'll still still be stunned even even if your your thing doesn't kill them. And like the this knockback shield isn't doing a, like a ton of damage in terms of you know uh, like knocking enemies back. That, like, that's for sure. I I think I am going to look around just a little longer, uh, solely because I want to be as prepared as possible for, for fighting the Collector, e even though I don't really need to be. And in actuality, I think any extra stat that I get is not going to be worth if I get hit one more time. 
And I've got three potion charges. So with with that in mind, I I think I'm in, in a, a great position to, to fight him. And I should do so. I can't promise I'm gonna flawless him this time, but I I am on like a like a three game collector flawless streak, which is pretty good in my opinion. So I am gonna reroll the uh, the freeze off of this because it's gonna flood me up. It's gonna screw me up real bad if I am freezing him during his attacks. Actually, now that I think about it, I I don't even remember if the collector can be frozen. Like maybe he's CC immune. Not uh, immobilizes though. I, I know I've gotten him in bear traps in the past. But uh, I, I think it's just because if I made it to this place with a free shield, I'm so paranoid that I'm not gonna not gonna do it. All right, had to take care of something, but I'm back now, so let's get the show on the road. Damn it. <laughs> That's always like the roughest attack for me to deal with against the collector because like I don't know what it is about it. It just doesn't respond well to to parries. Like the parries have to be way closer than they do with uh, a lot of other a lot of other uh Yeah, I don't know. It's just one of the few things that make or one of the things that make this boss really hard to flawless is like back when uh, back when he was first added as a boss and I, I still feel like this is the case now but I, I feel like he's easy to beat hard to flawless because he's got a lot of those attacks <laughs> okay well Maybe he's not easy to beat when you haven't played, or when you've taken a break for like half an hour and come back with losing all your mojo. And have devil damage. But that's okay. I'll do another quickie run and, and get back there. Okay, so I'm back and in a worse position game-wise, but a better position preparation-wise. An arguably better position. Just because I didn't take a break. Uh, we've got uh, some good traps with with poison and oil and poison oil synergy on the on the the tentacle, so it's a good build. It I just uh, played super sloppy trying to get back here as fast as possible, so I have no potion charges left. But I have disengagement, I've got dead inside, adrenaline. If if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. No promises. <laughs> I, I do think it's pretty funny that I got bonked right after talking sh I mean, uh, talking poop about this boss being easy. <laughs> it's just, he has been pretty easy in like all my other, and all my other runs. I, I just, uh, I guess he's easy when I'm like in the, when I'm still in the mojo from the other zone. Oh, this is the end already. Well, turrets can't finish him off, so I'm gonna... Well, I was gonna give him a little boot, but I guess I can block him with that, too. Alright. Already a significantly better performance. So, I suppose it's time to rate the weapon. In... I was going into this expecting Tentacle to be a C-tier weapon, being situational, good in some situations for bursting enemies down, but generally poor overall. Since then, I've bumped it up to, like... Uh, like high A, I mean high B, low A, because it's less situational than it seems. You can pretty easily get that get that hit off as long as you keep like running after you uh, after you land the the punch. You can get in range to do another punch. So and and the DPS is not terrible. It's not that it's not bad. 
it's good. It's enough to, to clear out like regular enemies pretty easily. It kind of struggles when you have to deal with larger enemies, but you can usually do like a, a sort of hit and run tactic to, to whittle them down over like three or four strikes. It's not bad, not bad. Uh, the main issue is just that, or like the only thing keeping it from being an A tier weapon is just the fact that it needs like a, a decent amount of setup in, in the form of synergies. It's, it's base damage isn't all that impressive and also like it's it is somewhat situational depends on on the situation you're in you can't always use it at maximum dps like you could with uh with something like rhythm and bazooki or scythe claws another a tier well i mean scythe claws are also very situational but yeah i i think that about sums it up it's it's a fun weapon it really is the, the utility of grappling onto enemies is interesting. It can be kind of buggy if you're going, like, jumping and, and firing to latch onto enemies, because you will, like, shoot up in the air and float for a bit. And, uh... You know, pulling yourself into the fray sometimes can get you hurt, so you gotta pick and choose your battles. Definitely needs some, some training to, to use properly. But, like I said, it's pretty darn good. So with that being said, uh, thanks everybody so much for watching. If you enjoyed, uh, consider leaving a like. If you didn't, some constructive criticism would be appreciated. If you have any questions about Dead Cells or any other game I play, or any other game, I can <laughs> go to Wikipedia I guess and give you an answer. Or not Wikipedia, but uh, Gamepedia, you know what I mean. Uh, if you got any suggestions for builds or, or runs, like challenge or otherwise, like a challenge or showcase type sort of thing like like this you know leave it in the comments I'll, I'll be sure to get to it anyway thanks again so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one